What's the evidence against giving too much oxygen to patients in the hospital? And are we actually causing a lot of harm? So this was a Choosing Wisely, Things We Do For No Reason article that was published recently. And there was actually a lot of evidence against giving too much oxygen. So let's talk about the history of medicine and oxygen. So in 1774, this is when oxygen was initially discovered. And in this initial report, the guy who discovered it recognized intuitively the double-edged nature of oxygen therapy, writing that it might be peculiarly salutary to the lungs in certain morbid cases, but it might not be so proper for us in the usual healthy state of the body. By 1939, an already impressive body of literature suggested that rodents and dogs died with injury to the lungs after several days of exposure to hyperoxia. And then there were these two scientists who were kind of skeptical about these findings. And so they actually subjected themselves to 65 hours of continuous hyperoxia. After one day of exposure, both men complained of progressively worsening paresthesias, dyspnea, and leukocytosis. And by the end of the exposure, one of them was actually hospitalized with fever, tachycardia, and a progressive drop in his vital capacity. Takes you back to the old days when people were discovering things just by experimenting in them on themselves. For example, I think the way that central lines were discovered was this guy who just took a Foley and just cannulated himself all the way to his heart to see if it was safe to do. So it was definitely pretty crazy back then. So how does excess oxygen cause harm? So by the 1970s, most medical texts began recommending supplemental oxygen in acute MI because of the theoretical appeal of increasing delivery of oxygen to the heart and other vital organs. However, there is a plethora of evidence showing that hyperoxemia causes significant harm. So high levels of oxygen, typically after a PaO2 of above 100 millimeters of mercury, is when you start to get a lot of reactive oxygen species that causes poor mucociliary clearance, surfactant impairment, airway irritation, alterations in microbiota, inflammation, and cell damage. And then when you actually get above 150 millimeters of mercury, you get these superoxide anions, which can inactivate nitric oxide and actually lead to vasoconstriction. So the evidence of harm is very robust. And so in the BMJ in 1976, you can see that 200 patients with suspected MI were randomized to six liters of oxygen versus room air. And there was found to have increased sinus tachycardia, as well as increased rate of MI recurrence. In the oxygen ICU trial, there were 480 critically ill patients randomized to liberal oxygen of a goal sat of 97 to 100% versus conservative oxygen with a goal sat of 94 to 98%. And there was increased mortality in the liberal oxygen group. And it was a pretty significant amount too, 20.2% versus 11.6%. And there was also a similar trial in France that showed increased pneumothorax, clinically relevant bleeding, MI, and arrhythmias. And there's been multiple other trials in other settings such as ischemic stroke, traumatic brain injury, and post-cardiac arrest, which have also linked liberal oxygen use with increased mortality. There's also a practical downside of giving too much oxygen. And this is a quote from a supplemental home oxygen user who was basically talking about how home oxygen is limiting them and limits their mobility, basically makes them become a couch potato and they can't really get out and do the things they like to do anymore mainly because supplemental oxygen is very heavy, it's very cumbersome, and there's a lot of practical downsides. So in the hospital setting, it may delay recognition of cardiopulmonary decompensation by delaying detection of hypoxemia. And from a patient's standpoint, you've seen this many times, but a lot of times they're going to start reporting epistaxis. They're going to have decreased mobility, and it's a fall and tripping hazard with all those wires going everywhere. Whenever you have patients who have a lot of tethers on them, it becomes a delirium risk. Home machines are loud, and they generate heat. They're very large and heavy. And there's a fire risk. I'm sure you've had those patients who were smoking while they were receiving supplemental oxygen, and it caused a fire, and they got massive burns to their face. There's obviously a financial burden. And honestly, a very significant downside is the negative psychologic impact that it has on patients because it worsens social isolation, it causes their disease to become visible to others, and it also can lead to this kind of psychological dependency where they feel like they're dependent on their oxygen. So the BMJ, in response to this evidence, set out some recommendations for oxygen inpatient targets. And basically, they said to start oxygen only if it's less than 90 to 92 percent. But more significantly, if you ever walk into a patient's room and you see them satting above 96%, you should stop the patient's supplemental oxygen right away. So one thing that I'm gonna change in my supplemental oxygen orders is what it's currently written as is goal O2 sat greater than 92%. And that's very vague, right? Uh, you'll see that goal O2 sat greater than 92% and that's kind of the default in our order set. 
and patients will be satting 99 or 100 percent all the time and they're still getting supplemental oxygen so it may be better to add in some more clarifying features and a more clear goal for example goal saturation 92 to 96 percent stop supplemental oxygen if above 96 percent given evidence for harm and increased mortality and then we would just kind of remove this catch all goal o2 sat greater than 92 percent verbiage I was thinking about if I should add something about starting O2 only if less than 90 or 92 percent, but I, it's kind of unclear to me why it's like 92, 92 percent. And I feel like the more text I put in here, uh, the more confusing it'll be for nursing and they're not really going to follow it at that point. So if I keep it simple, goal sat 92 to 96 percent, at least if they're setting above 96 percent, they'll be more likely to discontinue it. And then obviously for our COPD patients, we would do something like goal saturation 88 to 92 percent stop if above 92 percent and you know you could put something like to prevent the reversal of hypoxic pulmonary vasculature and also the bore effect which will lead to more co2 retention but i think that's a little bit too much details so for copd patients i'll just say stop if above 92 percent all right so maybe i'll just have something that looks a little bit like this for my uh, oxygen orders from now on i hope this brief review gave you some additional evidence and information about why too much oxygen is bad for patients and gave you some more confidence about stopping oxygen whenever you see it too high in patients so thanks again for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one and peace.